Hello YouTubers, Aaron here. Today we're going to go over how to replace an electrical outlet receptacle. I want to replace the one over by my bedside because I plug it in and out quite a bit and I found that it's gotten very loose to the point where when I plug it in oftentimes it starts to hang and even almost fall out, break my cords and never really is charging anything. So we're going to replace them today, but today when I went to the hardware store, I found that they have a something called a commercial grade electrical outlet receptacle. What's good about the commercial grade is that it's good for heavy duty use. It's an impact resistant nylon, corrosion resistant and heavy duty contacts for lasting plug retention. I'm going to demonstrate before we even get it started here so you can see the difference. When you plug it into our standard one with all the cables hanging off, it starts to just hang. And I want you to zoom in real close to the prongs so that people can see. You can see it just starts to, I plug it in, and then if I wiggle it a little bit, it starts to fall out. Where on this one, when you plug it in, when you plug it in a little bit, and you, you cantilever it, you wiggle it, and it really is pretty rigid. It takes a lot of force to plug it in, out or unplug it. So we're going to replace that today. I'm going to walk you through the steps for replacing the electrical receptacle. We'll need our flat blade screwdriver and a Phillips. Depending on how big your screws are, the usual screwdriver you'll need is a 3 16th inch screwdriver and a number 2 Phillips. The other ones are just in case we need them for prying things, I guess. What I'm doing here is first taking the face plate off using the 3 16 inch flat blade common screwdriver. I like to call it flat blade, but it's actually a common. And so I don't scratch anything up. A lot of times I'll just use my fingers, then pull it off and lay this down. Now it's very important to remember when you get started that the power is off before you actually start sticking your screwdriver in there. And even before taking the face plate off, you want to make sure the main power is off to the house and to your electrical receptacle. Then with a number two Phillips screwdriver, it usually says on the screwdriver it'll say P2. That stands for Phillips number two. It's a crosshead. It's another name for it. You go in here and you just unscrew the two screws. I'll just unscrew them. They should come right out. Now, I will say that I'm not being paid to do this, but I'll let you know that craftsmanship is off, or craftsmen are the type of Screwdrivers I like to use because if they wear out, especially your Phillips head screw tips often wear out, it's a lifetime warranty replacement. You just have to take those screwdrivers back to Sears and they'll replace them for free. Now you'll see in here you got some wires and what you want to do is just pull them out. I take the ground wire off first, makes it a little bit easier. That's just a simple screw. Now, a lot of times different electricians prior have wired it differently. So the easiest would be if they were around these screws here, but since they're not, we're going to, they have these quick disconnects. So you have to take your common 3 16 inch screwdriver, wedge it into the release valve, and then put a little bit of pressure on it and it'll pry right out. Sometimes they're a little bit tricky. You gotta put a lot of pressure on them. There, you see how that comes right straight out when put a little bit of pressure. You gotta be careful where your hand is. You don't want to jab your hand. Put a little pressure inside the flat blade screw slot of this particular one. It's usually some type of flat blade, and then it pulls straight out. So I'm using the pressure in the wall to pull back against the wire until it pops out. It's 
a little bit a little bit tough sometimes but when it when once you release release the little lever inside they'll pop right out of the hole lay that one off to the side take your good one now you got the good one you got your two blacks and two whites you could have either two blacks and two whites or one black and one white depending on if you got a wire going coming in and then a wire going out to another receptacle like we have here so you have two power two power feeds and two neutral wires and when you get an outlet like this you're going to see that on one side is two silver wires the other or two silver screws the other side is two gold screws the two gold screws go with the two black wires the two black wires are usually your power wires you need to know which ones are your power wires and usually in any any residential home usually your colored wires are power and they go on the gold screws sometimes they might be red sometimes they're black they almost are never green or blue or any other color. If you got a green wire, it's usually for your ground. Your ground wire, in most cases though, doesn't even have a casing around it. And it's usually just a straight copper wire. So here we got two gold, two gold screws. But because of the way this particular high-end commercial outlet is, I can put two wires into one screw base and we will be good to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and screw my two wires in. You can see inside here that there is a little bus bar on the inside that when I screw this down, it's gonna clamp it down. It's a little wire, a little nut. So I'm gonna put it in between that nut, my two wires, two black ones on the gold. And then take my Phillips head screwdriver, number two Phillips. And I'm just gonna crank it down. Nice and tight. And then on the two white sides, on the two white wires, I'm gonna put them on the silver. Because silver looks similar to white. So silver and white always go together, remember that. And then I crank it down. Silver on the white. Now, I usually don't have so much copper exposed, but I think it'll be okay because it's not. Sometimes it's a little bit too much. You might have to trim it back. There's quite a bit of copper exposed. You might have to trim it back if there's too much copper exposed. You don't want it to ground out. Nice and tight. Tight about probably, I don't know the exact torque, so I'm not going to say, but I don't know, maybe around 20 inch pounds, 30 inch pounds. But it, it, it can't move. You don't want it to come undone. And then we're putting the copper wire onto the green screw because the copper wire with no insulation is your ground wire. Your ground is green. Green screw has no white or black insulation. It's usually a bare exposed wire. Now remember, the power's off on the house. You want to work safe. Now, notice when I'm putting this on, the little circle part is up. You want to make sure that when you're putting on your receptacle, you just turn that upside down so the actual right side up correct way to install this would be to have the little circle at the bottom. You always want your circle at the bottom. It's just best practice. Even though it doesn't really make a difference, but when you go to plug things in in the house, it just makes it a little bit more convenient for things that have a prong at the bottom. It makes it look nicer if everything is consistent in the house. So number two Phillips to screw the two screws back into the hole of the box that the electrical wires are held in. Takes about 20 turns, maybe 25 turns. 
roughly and you want to make sure it's all the way in. Might be only 15 for some of you. Depends on how your house is. Enough turn so that when you put this on, this is a little bit over flush or flush. Either way. Now that's the face plate. We put that back on with our common screwdriver or flat blade. And you screw it in the center. One screw and it makes it nice and clean and neat. Then when you're all done, you wanna turn the power back on and test it to make sure it works. And that's it, like and subscribe.